Greetings everyone. Welcome to the lecture on female dancers, singers, entertainers as the unsung heroes of India's freedom struggle. There were several implications of colonialism on courtesans. The great teachers and disciples of classical music and dance were forced to search other avenues for a living because their profession had come under direct attack during the colonial rule. In the north, the Tabayafs or accomplished courtesans were compelled to eliminate the dance element from their performances as had been discussed in the preceding lecture. It was no longer considered fashionable to visit the kothas or salons of these artists and any sort of liaison with the Tawaif was socially condemned. Now this was a huge change that came about as compared to the preceding centuries. The freedom movement was dominated by reform minded Indians who preached social purity as well as temperance. The emerging Arya Samajis who condemned the Notch girl's profession saying it deserved no place in a civilized society and similar views were held by several other socio-religious reform movements. So what happened was a closing of doors. The coming of all India radio and cinema provided opportunities for a few talented artists to practice their profession but most of them sank into oblivion. During the 1930s there came an awakening when some lovers of the old performing arts of music and dance launched a vigorous drive to revive them. Their objective was to rescue it from the clutches of the infamous Tawaifs and Devdasis. After independence, even All India Radio closed its doors to these professional women singers on the ground that their private life was a public scandal. Thus, the national government became the guardian of public morality. By mid-19th century, several Tawaifs had moved to Lucknow in Awadh state where the Nawabs still supported their art. And when the British annexed Awadh state in 1856 uh, and the Tawaifs helped the mutineers, the discontent against the English East India Company was growing and the courtesans responded by playing a very active role in the revolt from behind the scenes. Their establishments called Kothas became the meeting zones and hideouts for rebels, for soldiers and those who had accumulated wealth provided rebels even with financial support besides other logistics. A very interesting uh, information has been provided by Veena Talwar Oldenburg in her essay Lifestyle as Resistance, the case of the courtesans of Lucknow. She has discussed the power and influence of courtesans of Lucknow during the course of the revolt of 1857. Her examination of civic tax ledgers from 1858 to 1877 shows that the Tawaifs were in the highest tax bracket with the largest individual incomes of any in the city. The essay also notes the systematic crackdown on the institution following the mutiny. The courtesan's names were also on the lists of property that was confiscated by the colonial rulers. So the list included houses, orchards, manufacturing and retail establishments uh, uh, as well as the names of the Tawaifs. 
that were confiscated by British officials for their proven involvement in the siege of Lucknow and the rebellion against British rule in 1857. So, these women were penalized for their instigation of and their assistance to the rebels. However, the nationalist leadership of pre-independence and post-independence India has failed to acknowledge a very crucial role that these women on the margins were playing in the freedom struggle. Oldenburg has also shed light on the British retaliation against courtesans. They got warrants for searching their, uh, in, uh, their uh, places and would destroy them, break the furniture, pull down the curtains and that is how the Tawayaf culture was physically and morally dismembered. Uh, a very important issue that colonial administration raised from time to time and especially in during the course of 1857 was the issue of venereal diseases. Curtisans were the subject of frequent official memorandums that were written in connection with a grave medical crisis that was engulfing the military establishment in Lucknow as well as in several other uh, cantonments in British India. A large number of European casualties during the mutiny and the rebellion of 1857, it was discovered was caused by a disease and not only an armed combat. The embarrassing fact that emerged was that one in every four European soldiers was afflicted with a venereal disease. So, this was nothing less than an epidemic. So, a very important issue that emerged now was disciplining the soldiers. The battle to reduce European mortality rates would now be joined on the hygienic front to ensure a healthy European army for the strategic needs of the British Empire. So, it became all the more imperative that the courtesans and prostitutes of Lucknow along with those in other 110 cantonments in India wherever European soldiers were stationed should be regulated, inspected, controlled and proper survey and maintenance of records should be carried on. So, the provisions of Britain's Contagious Diseases Act of 1864 were incorporated into a very comprehensive piece of legislation that came in the form of uh, Act in 1864 in India. It required the registration as well as periodic medical examination of prostitutes in all the cantonment cities of the Indian British Indian Empire. Here, I would also like to share uh, the account of a contemporary writer, Sharar. Uh, the courtesans of Lucknow were especially reputable as they had established themselves at the Awadh court in the 18th century under the lavish patronage of the chief noblemen, merchants as well as the official elites of the capital city as has been mentioned by Sharar in his account. Uh, Sharar as a novelist and a journalist who constructed a remarkable history of the Nawabs of Awadh based mainly on the oral testimony of the survivors of the events of 1857 in Lucknow tells of their very important role in court politics. So, Sharar has described at length the kind of active role uh, these women were playing in court politics. He has given example of Piaro's role uh, and a cultivated man like Hakim Mahdi who later became Wazir or Prime Minister of Awadh owed his initial success to a courtesan named Piaro who advanced her own money to enable him 
to make an offering or a nazrana to the ruler on his first appointment as the governor of the province of Awadh. So, the idea that was being conveyed by Sharar was that the association with a courtesan was considered as some kind of a cultural trait uh, rather than as an evil practice. Sharar was strongly of the opinion that the morals, manners and distinctiveness of Lucknow culture and society was largely sustained and cultivated as well as nurtured by these courtesans. City's main chalk bazaar and uh, the Kesar Bagh palace uh, were not only recognized as the main centers of cultural activities, but also as the centers of high culture of the court. And a very important role in this was played by uh, these Tabayevs who excelled and uh, who experimented in several de developments related to Hindustani music and Kathak dance styles. They commanded great respect in the court and in society and also bestowed prestige on all those who were invited to their salons for cultural soirees. It was not uncommon for the young sons of the nobility to be sent to these salons for instruction in etiquette, conversation, politeness and also appreciation of Urdu literature and knowledge. So, several musicians belonged to the famous lineages and much of the late 19th century Hindustani music was invented and transformed in these salons to accommodate the new urban elite who filled the patronage vacuum in the colonial period. Now, uh, let us talk about some of the exceptional women who though were put in the category of uh, notch girls or tawaevs, but they were transgressing boundaries and they were playing very important role in politics, in cultural life uh, and also in the course of the movement. So, for example, Begum Hazrat Mehal, wife of Wajid Ali Shah who was the last Nawab of Awadh and according to several accounts, she was a courtesan before marriage. During the mutiny, while her husband was in exile, rebels under her leadership briefly seized control of Lucknow and it was her son Birgis Kadar who was named as the king. Several courtesans like Husseini and Azizan Bai uh, who have gone unrecorded in history played a very important role and in fact there are several unsubstantiated accounts of girls who took to the streets in the battle with the British soldiers. In June 1857 when Indian soldiers laid siege to Kanpur, uh, enclosing British East India Company officials. They were accompanied by a courtesan. And in the midst of the confrontation, as the shots were uh, started, the courtesan was seen by several eyewitnesses armed with pistols. So, such was the active military role that was played by several of these women. Uh, Azizan Bai's story also finds no mention in history textbooks. If it survives today, it is mainly in archival reports or local legends and a very important paper written by Lata Singh. Uh, Lata Singh has made a pivotal uh, contribution to the understanding uh, of important role played by several of these women. So, for example, uh, uh, several of these women were at the forefront and also behind the scenes working as informers, messengers uh, and even conspirators in the Kanpur chapter of the rebellion. Lata Singh in her article, Making the Margin Visible, uh, has noticed that Azizan was a favorite among the sepoys of the second cavalry posted in Kanpur and was specially close to one of the soldiers, Shamsuddin. Uh, 
her house was a meeting point of the sepoys and she also formed a group of women who went around fearlessly they used to cheer the soldiers attended to their wounds distributed uh, food arms ammunition and in fact uh, she made one of the gun batteries uh, her headquarters for this kind of work and during the entire period of the siege of kanpur she was with the soldiers who she considered to be her friends and she was always armed with pistols herself she was also spotted on horseback in male attire decorated with uh, pistols during the mutiny now uh, the british onslaught has also been captured by several writings like rudyard kipling's on the city wall refers to the anti british activities of the curtisans during 1857 uh, and post 1857 the full strength of the british empire descended on their hideouts the curtisan who had been the repository of old culture fine arts uh, was relegated to the status of a common prostitute as their vast properties were seized and their opulent lifestyle came to an end the muzaffarnagar area in western up had also seen very active participation of women during the course of the movement some of the names of the women rebels that have been captured are asha devi uh then habiba bhagwati devi tyagi indra kaur jamila khan man kaur uh, shobha devi all of whom sacrificed their life in active fighting however not much has been written about them according to the records all these women with the exception of one uh, asghari begum were in their 20s they were hanged and in some cases were even burnt alive then uh, uh, as dalhousie uh, was uh, working on the doctrine of lapse there were two other queens besides uh, so many uh, important rulers and leaders of the revolt about whom much has been written so far uh, who rose against the british and they were avanti bai lodi of raigad and rani dropadi of dhar so uh, the point that i am trying to make is that we need to look beyond the common names of leaders uh, and talk about the lesser known leaders the local leaders uh, also the masses and women on margins who played a very important role in the freedom struggle now coming to the british reaction during the post 1857 period the mutiny was a turning point for the british empire in india and also it blew a death knell for the curtisans art the administration came directly under the british crown bringing with it the victorian era project of morality which placed a premium on women's chastity and domesticity so domesticity which had always been the hallmark of indian uh, uh, cultural traditions was now all the more reinforced by the british uh, state as well as by indian educated intelligentsia so as a result there was a definite fall in the status of public performers curtisans who came to be equated with prostitutes and they were uh, their places were now branded as brothels several laws such as the contagious diseases act of 1864 which was originally aimed to curb the spread of venereal diseases among british troops allowed the crown to monitor control and also curb the earnings of curtisans by clubbing them with prostitutes and subjecting them to very strict regulations that they were not able to carry on with their professional work of dancing and singing anymore 
Christian missionaries and Indian reformers launched the anti-Notch movement during the late 19th century and the public opinion started to weigh heavily against courtesans as well as dancers. So with their livelihoods shattered, some of them turned to sex work to make ends meet, further cementing their association with prostitution. Now a very important aspect that needs to be discussed is the relationship between courtesans and nationalism. Mass resistance to British rule began through the Swadeshi and the non-cooperation movements in the 1900s. The social status and the financial position of most courtesans was a pale shadow of their clout in 1857. However, there were still several courtesans who were nationalist to the core, for example, Gohar Jan, a celebrated courtesan who found immense success as a recording artist in the 1900s, was approached by Mahatma Gandhi to contribute to the Swaraj Fund to support the freedom movement. She agreed to organize a fundraising concert on the condition that Mahatma Gandhi would attend her performance, which he was not able to, but still she managed to raise some fund and also contributed to the fund. During the Gandhi-led non-cooperation movement from 1920 to 1922, a group of courtesans in Varanasi formed the Tawayaf Sabha to support the independence struggle. Then there was Husna Bai who chaired the Sabha and she urged members of the group to wear iron shackles instead of ornaments as a symbol of protest and also to boycott foreign goods and to adopt simple clothes and khadi. Then uh, some courtesans also decided to start their musical performances with renditions of nationalist songs and one such song that was written was Chun Chun Ke Fool Lelo that was uh, included as some kind of a uh, uh, rendition for inspire feelings of nationalism. So the idea of artists asking for political and social change touched the lives of these women. The political class was including them in discussions on a more long term basis and not just as a short term strategy. They were being asked to take part in the movement and in the public life at grassroots level. However, still we see that the elites and the leaders of the nationalist movement were closing the doors to these, uh, this category of women. So Mahatma Gandhi met a group of prostitutes in Barisal uh, and Kakinada uh, who expressed the desire to join the Indian National Congress. Uh, and uh, Mahatma Gandhi's answer to them was that they had to give up sex work and start spinning the charkha. Okay? So uh, unless and until they got rid of their evil practices and they uh, stopped leading the life of shame, uh, the Indian National Congress which was uh, you know, a great party with high moral standards could not accept donations or services from them or to elect them as delegates or encourage them to become members of the Congress. So as has been pointed out by Lata Singh, social ostracism was uh, rampant and it restricted the extent of involvement of Tawayafs in the freedom struggle. Even the middle class women who were participating in the movement said that they do not want to be seen around the courtesans because being with them was creating anxiety among the middle class Bhadra Mahila who was an educated woman who belonged to respectable families. So uh, a rough picture emerges uh, of the ways in which 
Scottisans tried to contribute to the freedom struggle in their own uh, ways and according to their own means. Many of their stories have been lost because it was never thought that Tawayafs were important enough to document. However, as we have seen, uh, they played a very important and crucial role uh, and it is time that India remembered and saluted these brave women. Thank you.